Hello guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we're doing a creepypasta called Maria's Revenge, and this is a very interesting creepypasta to me. I don't really find these very often, but it's sort of like Ben Majora's Mask. It's got actual footage, it's got screenshots, which we'll go over later and discuss the authentic authenticity. It's got um this it's got this uh, sort of diary-like entry where it's all uh, it's all in certain chapters if you will and I'm gonna go over each of them so I'm gonna read them word for word because I really don't want to lose anything in translation to this creepypasta so I'm just gonna do it word for word I would normally summarize a uh, creepypasta this long but for that I just want to I just want you to hear it word for word so with that said let's begin Maria's Revenge I'm gonna go read chapter so let's begin I had just gotten into Wii hacking when an internet friend suggested I rip my own games for emulators he sent me a tutorial that allowed me to use my Wii to put GameCube games onto an SD card, which I could then put onto the computer and use Dolphin, a GameCube Wii emulator, to play. This was convenient because my Player One slot on my Wii was broken, and it had been years since I could play any of those old games. Being the Sonic fan that I am, I immediately put Sonic Adventure 2 into my Wii, launched a program called Clean Rip, and about 20 minutes later, it was done. I hadn't used Dolphin before, but I eventually figured it out and launched Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I eagerly configured my controls and started with the hero storyline, thrusting myself immediately into City Escape. I played for days straight, only stopping to eat, sleep, and go to my part-time job at the bakery. I was playing Kayo Karate. My Kayo, Tiny, delivered a spinning back kick to the opposer and won the match, granting me the final emblem in the game. I had all the emblems, all S-ranked, the secretary theme, all three Kayo gardens, the alternate costumes, everything in the game. That's when it dawned on me, this is the second time I've done this in my lifetime, and it's time to put the game to rest. I couldn't do it though. I was so addicted to this game, I had to keep playing. So I launched up the web browser and typed in a Google search, Unlockable Secrets in Sonic Adventure 2. I found some hidden artwork, apparently some Halloween costumes you could get back when Dreamcast had downloadable content. But I'm on the GameCube version anyway, so it doesn't matter. New items for KO Garden, but one thing really did catch my attention in all this. A Maria Robotnik menu theme. My reaction was that of a child. Oh my god, a Maria theme. I learned quickly that you had to have a Game Boy Advance to do it, and you need 30,000 rings. I had 50,000, so it didn't really matter, but I did not have a Game Boy Advance. I searched for an emulator solution and found that someone had made a modified version of Dolphin that could connect to the Visual Boy Advance-M emulator, a Game Boy Advance emulator for those who didn't know. I downloaded a Sonic Adventure 2 ROM and launched it in Visual Boy Advance, then launched up Sonic Adventure 2 in the modified version of Dolphin. I went to the Kaio Garden in both games to make sure it was connected. Then I went to the Black Market in Sonic Adventure 2 and lo and behold, the Maria theme was there. SUCCESS! I bought it immediately and flew to the options screen to apply the Maria theme. But when I did, the game locked up and I saw the Windows 7 message. Dolphin.exe has stopped working. Windows is checking for a solution to the problem. It stayed for a second until the close program button showed up. All I could do was hope I did not lose my progress. I relaunched the game and saw Marie in the background holding the post from the Shadows Past cutscene. Maria's image was fighting and tearing graphics. The logos were very broken. At times you could see through parts of them. It looked like MS Paint garbage. This was even more so apparent when the opening movie started, showing the long bridge from Radical Highway, with Maria still in the background. The graphics were still fighting each other as the buildings and stars seemed really broken. Even the sky was harsh and posterized with sharp blues and blacks. The special effects in the game... Like, like when it flashes with lots of blue lights and says Sonic the Hedgehog, it just played. All of these animations at almost regular speed, they were all done before it even showed Sonic. It looked really horrible, and the music didn't help. The game was lagging ridiculously. I mean, it was lagging so bad, I had time to launch Camtasia and start recording this phenomenon. The music was choppy and pitched, but almost regular speed. Live and learn. I had, I heard as a music, uh finished before the camera even zoomed in on Shadow's face. I assume since the game locked up, it somehow made Maria's theme be everywhere all the time. But after I got past that horrible scene of Shadow opening his invisible eyelids and Broken Color's body, with Maria's graphic fighting him, Maria's theme wasn't even on the menu. It was a Shadow the Hedgehog theme I had on before I did all this. Naturally, I wanted to turn it on, but found I didn't have the Maria theme. I was baffled. If I didn't have the Maria's theme, then what was happening to the opening movie? This also means I didn't save, which means I had to do the whole thing again. 
I went to stage select, went to the Kayo Garden with Shadow, because I like him. Ran into the normal Kayo Garden and was about to launch VBA-M, Visual Boyd Man Sam, when I saw a new egg. I was frustrated, so I decided to throw the egg and let out some anger. When I picked up the egg, I decided to close Camtasia because the game was still lagging a bit. I threw it at the wall to the left of the Kayo teleporter. The egg cracked and an odd Kayo bounced back and behind me. I turned around to look at it as the game froze. It looked like a Kayo with Maria's hair, staring at Shadow. Shadow was also looking at the Kayo. I stared for a few seconds before I launched Task Manager to see if Dolphin was responding. Task Manager said it was running normally, so I messed with the controls a bit. It's not abnormal for Task Manager to say a frozen program is running, so I decided to close Dolphin from Task Manager's processes. Before I closed Dolphin, however, I took a screen capture of what was happening. I opened Paint.net to save the screenshot. I cropped it uh, while I was there, because why not, and had a closer look at it. I thought I saw something really faint. I went ahead and saved the picture. Then I opened something called Curves, which is a color editor in Paint.net. Curves sometimes helps me uh, bring out details in the picture, so I decided to use it here. I played with it for a good 10 minutes. Then I saw her. Maria was staring down on Shadow. It was very faint, but she was there, on the right side of the screen, looking straight at Shadow. She was there. That was enough to make me breathe heavily. My mind was just blown. I don't know what was happening. Should I continue my pursuit to unlock everything? Well, of course. Today is my day off, and if I didn't do this, then what will I have to do? I launched the game, skipped the horrible opening movie, and decided to stop with the Maria theme. This time, I wanted to see if I could find anything else wrong with this game, so I went to story mode, dark story, and started Shadows Past, the Radical Highway level. The cutscene with Eggman watching Shadow stand on the bridge played normally. I decided to launch Camtasia and record once Shadow's segment of, uh, of the cutscene started. Hmm, how pathetic, Shadow said as there was uh, a strange purple flash over the screen. Find them before they escape. The cutscene was playing normally until Maria's part showed up. The sound was messed up, the audio was saying, all the people do it, I beg, all the people do it, I beg, all the people do it, I beg, no, I beg, no, I beg, no. But the word no was in Shadow's voice. The cutscene played over itself for a, for a moment, overlapping. Then the cutscene stopped, short and went straight to the stage. Once I started playing the stage, I read, Break Through the Besieging Military. But all the letters were grayed out, except for a couple. The letters that were not grayed out were the A in Break, the R in Through, the I in Besieging, and the M in Military, and the A in Military. In the background sky, I saw Maria's head and shoulders from an odd top-down angle. Her eyes were really dark, almost black, and she was sort of staring at Shadow out of the left corner of her eye. I took a screenshot of close Camtasia because Dolphin was lagging a bit. As I played through the stage, I never lost sight of Maria. Even if it, were, even if it was her back, dress, feet, hair, one eye, or a finger, she was always there, fading in and out. I decided to pause the game and launch Camtasia again. At this point, I didn't care about the lag, I just wanted to capture this. A few seconds after and pausing, I beat one of the gun robots, and, uh, and the Gerald in prison cutscene started playing over the game. But the text and special effects weren't on it, just Gerald kind of sitting there. But it distorted the colors of the game. It was kind of like what was happening with the intro, but Gerald was tearing the graphics instead of fighting them. The cutscene clearly had dominance over the other graphics, but halfway through the cutscene, Maria started fading in and out of the scene in different poses from different angles, even with everything that was happening in the game was playing at perfect speed. One pose shocked me, however. Maria was on her back and her legs spread awkwardly, allowing the camera to catch a full shot of her special parts. Maria was blocking her face with her hands. I decided to pause the game and stop recording there. I saved the video and severely blurred it at that part so you can't make it out. I didn't realize until I unpaused the game, but I had been playing the entire time before I paused and actually rather, well, I was impressed with myself. There was another pose that caught my eye though. One of Maria completely naked holding her pose during the Shadows Pass cutscene on the control panel. They started getting more disturbing, as another pose of Maria naked showed her legs were red and it looked like her hair. Blood I thought? But Sonic Adventure 2 doesn't have any blood graphics. Then again, this isn't a blood graphic, I screen capped it and cropped it down to only her legs. Once I beat the stage, the game began counting my rings and score. Instead of getting rank S, which I totally deserved, a shot of Maria's face was shown and the stage faded out. 
Normally after Radical Highway, the cutscene with Sonic finding Shadow on top of Bigfoot Robot with the Chaos Emerald plays, but that was completely skipped. It also didn't put me into the Ek Quarters level, in fact it skipped Ek Quarters, Lost Colony, Weapons Bed, Security Hall, and started the cutscene before White Jungle. Shadow was walking through the forest, the cutscene was normal, Shadow picked up his talkie and Rouge's voice was playing normally. This is Rouge, I've got a small problem, but the subtitles were incorrect. The subtitles read, Gerald, all the people do it, all the scientists. The audio continued normally, but the next set of subtitles didn't say, I can't believe that I'm trapped inside this lock site with a. They instead said, ST is this on the arc. When I wake, when I sleep, they look, they do thing. I continued, instead of Chaos Emerald, I guess I won't be able to call myself a. The subtitles read, I did not know why they it hurt, I cannot walk, I am dead. Instead of Treasure Hunter anymore, the subtitles read, Rug Down by Gerald No. The countdown of Eggman's bomb showed on the screen, and it flashed uh, white. Maria was shown leaning over a control panel. It does this in the cutscene normally, but the game froze there and the audio stopped. I thought Dolphin was lagging, so I opened Microsoft Notepad and jotted down the subtitles, hoping to make some sense of them later. I also decided to launch Camtasia. It took a minute to load up, but when it did, it didn't st I didn't start recording because nothing was happening anymore. I loaded up Task Manager to see how much CPU the computer was using, so I decided to keep Camtasia open or close it. The whole computer was peaking at 50% and idling at 10%. That's excellent for the Dolphin emulator, especially when running Camtasia. Dolphin was still running according to Task Manager, so I decided to hit Enter, which I had pinned as the GameCube Start button. Uh, to to skip the cutscene, Windows sent me a beep to say that Enter doesn't do anything. I minimized Camtasia and clicked on Dolphin, so when I hit Enter, Dolphin would get it. But before I hit Enter, I noticed that the stars behind Maria's head were kind of off looking. I stared for a minute to see if Maria's face was back there, and then I noticed a few odd patches where stars were missing. I took a screenshot close Camtasia so I wouldn't kill my PC saving this. Then I opened Paint.net so I could save the screenshot. I stared at the shot for a few minutes. I noticed that the patches of missing stars were letters that spelled KILL. I saved the file, then I outlined the missing stars and saved another picture. I clicked on Dolphin and once again pressed enter. The sound effect played as the screen read, Wii U Shing, Stage 9, White Jungle, First Mission. Cut through the jungle in 10 minutes. Like in Radical Highway, all the letters in the text box were grayed out except for a couple. The word CUT the T in through, the R in through, the E in the, and the J in jungle, and the U in jungle, and the L in jungle, and the exclamation point. I, I never made any sense of these letters. I waited for the level to load, and when it started, I saw Maria in the sky with a blank expression, looking down on shadow, but sort of towards the screen at the same time. I stared, observing every detail of her indescribable face. An ounce of logic must be left in my mind because I told myself not to play anymore. I came up with a great excuse to take a break, figuring out these strange messages. I started with the screenshot I took of Radical Highway. I only had to look for a second before I figured out what the letter spelled. Maria. Feeling pretty confident, I wanted to take a shot at the subtitles I jotted down a moment ago. I first strung them all together in Windows Notepad. Gerald, all the people do it, all the scientists on the Ark. When I wake, when I sleep, they, they, they look, they do things. I, do, I did not know why they had hurt. I cannot walk. I am drugged down by Gerald. No. They look, they do things. When I sleep, when I wake, all the scientists do these things? All the scientists were doing something to her when she was sleeping, something that hurt. Did they perform experiments on her? I know Gerald was trying to cure Maria's neuroimmunodeficiency syndrome. Maybe he was trying to cure Maria during her sleep. Then I remember the pictures of Maria naked, and the ones where Maria's legs were red. Oh my god, I said out loud. Did Gerald and all these other men commit acts of... to Maria? I stood up and paced around a room for a while, occasionally glancing at the computer screen, refreshing my memory, the details of Maria's face. The experience was starting to make sense, though. Gerald drugged Maria down, and the scientist jumped her. It's probably why she loves Shadow so much. He never touched her. This is starting to fill some of the plot holes in Sonic Adventure 2, though. Shadow does mention Gerald building the Eclipse Cannon. And, the, and that Project Shadow is indeed an experiment to make weapons of mass destruction, not to cure neuroimmunodeficiency syndrome. 
In the Japanese version of Sonic X, I remember that Maria was put into the Ark because her disease is contagious and deadly. If, neuroimmun if neuroimmunodeficiency syndrome is contagious, that means all the scientists on the Ark got it and thus couldn't leave. This also gives a reason for the gun raid. Gerald gave them their weapons of mass destruction. Eclipse Cannon and Shadow, so Gun killed everyone on board as not to spread the disease or use any of these weapons. Gerald was arrested, however, it was probably so Gun could ask him how to use Shadow and the Eclipse Cannon. Two pieces of information Gun never got. If the scientists had the disease, that means they had nothing to live for, which explains their actions. Still, I find this hard to take in all at once. I mean, seriously, how old is Marie anyways? What could Sega be thinking? Would Sega put such a twisted plot element in a children's game? I don't think so. But now that I think about it, there are a lot of holes in Sonic Adventure 2 that got filled. And a whole lot of garbage in Shadow the Hedgehog 2005 that never happened. For example, Shadow didn't lead Maria to a dead end where she was shot like the Shadow the Hedgehog opening suggests. Maria in fact led Shadow to the cryogenic tube while already wounded, where she then launched Shadow out of the arc and died as she pulled a lever. It's obvious in Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic X, while Sonic the Hedgehog rewrites Shadow's entire life and honestly isn't very dark plot-wise. I'm starting to believe that Sonic Adventure 2's plot was so sketchy because Sonic Team had to remove all these gruesome plot elements last minute. Just like Genocide City from Sonic 2, it's still in the game, you just have to hack it to get there. And once you get there, all the level's graphics are gone. Linking both emulators together like that must have caused the game to load up like it was originally supposed to. I think Shadow the Hedgehog solely existed to help cover up some of the nonsense in Sonic Adventure 2. After my logic session, I found myself seated, staring at the details of Maria's face once again. I couldn't stop feeling sorry for her. She's such an innocent girl, always valuing her experience as providing light to any unsettling situation. For these men, no, no, these monsters, to crush her spirit, it's... it's unhuman. Through some deep breathing, I found myself calmed enough to to begin playing this level. As I played, I couldn't keep my mind off Maria. The images of her in sexual positions fading in and out of the backgrounds made the matter hard to ignore. The stars that say kill faded gradually into memory and pieced themselves together with these sexual positions of Maria. My logic was functioning in a mind-numbing way, but it eventually came to two possible conclusions. That Maria was killed during one of these acts, thus the stars that say kill, or Maria possibly wanted somebody killed. This isn't making any sense, I thought to myself, but I remembered something I had sealed away in my memory. When I was a child, I had a series of similar experiences with a neighbor. The game was Doctor. I still remember the words, a let's play Doctor in the storage building. Her obsession with pine needles and blackberries, it, it's a painful subject. I went on for a couple days before the parents of us both captured the act. I never saw her again, but I came to a decision to forgive her. I was damaged though. Those experiences, once I realized what had actually happened, severely affected some major decisions in my life. When I think real hard about what actually happened, it honestly wasn't a terrifying experience. Dementing, weird, and somewhat scarring, yeah. But I had so much help and counseling from that point on, it no longer was a problem. This girl, Maria though, she was on a space station full of men. Her experiences was really, were really horrible. She didn't have the counseling or escape I had. She died on that ark, used as a rag doll and thrown into the garbage. I wish I could help her. I could bring her to the same realizations I've come to if we could only meet. Alas, this is only a video game, but I couldn't shake the feeling of connection I have with Maria. I decided to do whatever Maria would have me do. Anything to clean her face of its paleness. Once I beat White Jungle, I got, rank, I got rank Maria's face, and the game instantly flashed to the cutscene of Sonic and Shadow going super, but Maria was fading in and out of the scene. I decided to bring up Camtasia, but couldn't start recording until about halfway through the scene. At this point, the camera had completely zoomed in on Shadow, cutting Sonic out. When the cutscene ended, the game took me to a, to a completely black scene. Shadow's animation was frozen, his shading was bland, and his power aura missing. Live and Learn was playing, but severely slowed down and choppy. The background was fading in and out, many different uh, harsh burning colors. I saw Marie in the background, always on top of the colors. She looked like she was falling while holding her chest, and her shading was very darkly colored. 
I pressed the up arrow on my keyboard and started moving forward. The controls were very stiff and didn't feel like Sonic Adventure 2 at all. The camera was stiff too. I saw a wooden chair with Gerald sitting on it. Some white text appeared at the top of the screen. It said, for all the people on that planet, kill him. Right then, I knew murdering Gerald would be the best thing for Maria. I floated around him for a second, looking at his angles. He didn't look exactly like the Gerald on the cutscenes. Maybe this is a beta model or something, I thought, but after a second, some more text appeared as the original text disappeared. Shadow, do it for me, so we can be happy. I pressed X on my keyboard, which I had pinned to the GameCube's A button. Shadow's pose changed to the pose he holds when he attacks the final hazard, and the game froze. Thank you was shown in white text on the black background. The font on the bottom was on the bottom corner right corner of the screen. After a minute, I started pressing buttons. I pressed every control for the game, then every button on my keyboard. Nothing happened though. I decided to save this recording so I wouldn't lose it. I closed Dolphin, then I started recording again, and when I opened Dolphin and loaded Sonic Adventure 2, the thank you screen was immediately there. No Sega logo, no license by Nintendo, just thank you. Maria wanted to kill Gerald for doing all those things to her, with the other scientists to the Ark. Revenge for dragging her down, holding her, doing her. It's disgusting. But helping Maria carry out her revenge on Gerald made me happy. Now Maria can rest in peace. Maybe that's why Sonic Adventure 2 says, rest easy heroes. But instead of saying that, it says, thank you. You're welcome, Maria. My, my, my. I really do like this creepypasta. It's been a while since I've read one this good. First off, for starters, it really doesn't have many cliches, and to be honest, for the few that it does, it doesn't take away from the experience whatsoever. It's lengthy, but not to the point where it overstays its welcome and ends up being a novel. It's got evidence to prove it as well, which we'll take a look at in a bit. The story is disturbing with all of the adult matter involved. Usually a creepypasta will throw in gore, blood, and graphic sexual content to shock the reader, and make it sound creepy, which 95% of the time does not work and it ends up failing. I've always said it needs to balance itself, because too much can just kill the experience flat out, which it honestly does. But it also needs context as well, which this has plenty of. I found the content disturbing and disgusting, but it fit well with the story, and coupled with the connection to the author's past, it blended in perfectly and really made you, you know, really affected you, instead of, you know, turning you off. I was creeped out and sucked further into the tale, wanting to know more about Maria, and all of this sick stuff that was going on. The events of the creepypasta when it came to the technicals was very nice as well. The footage can definitely have been faked, with some very clever video editing. But the software and tools used in the creepypasta definitely fit into the tale, describing the emulators and whatnot. And from personal experience, it makes sense as well. I use emulation all the time to play old consoles that I can't play anymore. And some of this phenomenon is more common than you think. There's tons of glitches that don't really resemble what this creepypasta does per se. I mean, not all these I've ever seen personally, but these events can happen individually in nearly any game you play on an emulator, depending on the settings and plugins used from a technical standpoint. Even the resolution you're rendering it on, all this stuff really can cause glitches and whatnot. And it made sense, and it was possible, so I was glad this wasn't the result of a hacked demonic game that you got from someone sketchy, giving it away for free, or at most 11 cents, on Craigslist. I don't know much about Sonic lore, and at first I thought some of this stuff was bullshit, but then I looked it up, and the plot is similar to this creepypasta. Now, I don't know about all these plot holes, as I'm no expert in the lore, but maybe you, the viewer, if you have some knowledge about the Sonic series, can confirm if this is true in the comments below. I've seen gameplay of Genocide City, but I've never actually played it, so I can't confirm, I can't confirm it, but I've seen Sonic CD. So I've seen I've seen what was I've seen what happened in the Sonic City, okay? It's really creepy there too, so I have no doubts that Sega could have done this. I mean they do some creepy shit, alright? Maybe this is too far fetched for them, and it definitely is too far fetched in my opinion. But who knows what goes on in Sega headquarters, right? That's really all I have to say. Looking at the footage, for those who want to go to the channel that created this creepy pasta and the footage, links are below. It looks to be authentic, and even then the skeptic in me still believes that it can be recreated very well in editing suites, and that the photo looked quite the photos in the creepypasta that were detailed look quite edited to me. 
some of the paint really doesn't blend into me and it feels kind of out of place. Uh, just looking at this screenshot in particular, uh, this screenshot is also definitely faked as I really don't see an in-game shadow, plus the hair is kind of blocky. This could be the game's graphical style, but I don't think so. And that's really all I have to say. It's a good creepypasta and I really do like it. It's got a good plot. It has some nice footage and it really ties in together and uses all its elements properly. I'm not going to say if it's fake or not, you'll find the answer for yourself if you check this uh, creepypasta out in the wiki below. Links are down there. As always, seriously, go check it out. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. What would you rate this creepypasta and what would you change to make it better? This is me, Mudahar, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.